So, you know, I could hear them talking and I'm saying, well, what's the matter? He says, well, it's supposed to be between four and seven. So I said, and he said, but the, the, what's puzzling them is that after 60, apparently he's supposed to be in a coma. But I think it's because you're quite a built, stocky lad that you've managed to keep on going for this long. So uh, straight onto uh, insulin and potassium and saline drips, you know, a mixture of them. Um, and I was in a hospital basically for a period, a full period of a week. Um, and it would have been longer if it hadn't been for the fact that I took ownership of how they would help teaching me to take the injections, you know, use different sites um, and trying to basically get myself fixed and back out because I was conscious I was still in a trading period at work. I was just conscious about getting back into work. And I suppose it didn't really hit home until the first night when my son came up to the hospital bed I'm in and I couldn't even pick him up because I was that drained. I couldn't, I couldn't literally lift anything. And I don't like showing emotion, but at that point it was it was pretty gut wrenching, pretty heart wrenching. You know how I felt. Like if I've got to do it, I've got to do it at least for my son. You know, I've got to be quite uh, not selfish this time. So um, that's how I found out. Basically, it was a first time ever. Know more about it. Still, probably don't know as uh, as much as. A, probably could do uh, but it's it's been a constant learning curve because there's always I mean in the whole process of me coming from hospital to home there's been bits missed out that I've had to pick up on um, you know that's this this the support you know while you're at hospital fantastic they look after you brilliant the transitional phases they're the bits where it gets a bit messy um, you know, it's it's where one's passing the beacon to the other but the other's not really ready for it or they're not fully aware of the situation and, you know, do you mean by that when you left hospital it, it was kind of a question of getting your notes to your GP I think that was faxed over right. um, but I think the phrase that came to mind for me was that they were winging it they were basically you know going on the, on the fly they were basically you know looking at it as it came and you know to be fair ever since I've left hospital I've only ever seen my diabetic GP at my surgery once because he only does two sessions a week um, in the afternoons or mornings and, and you know it's hard when you've got work commitments to try and take time off uh, I mean my work's been really supportive They've, whenever there's been um, you know an annual checkup thing or the uh, need then they'll, they'll give me time off to do it um, so they're really supportive but uh, obviously in terms of the, the surgery everything I've really information wise I've had fantastic support from the diabetes specialist nurse at the hospital, you know, at the clinic. Uh, they're the ones that have been the most helpful. If I've ever had any queries, they've got like an answer machine service, they get back to you. Uh, excuse me. Um, but you, so you're not really getting ongoing, regular checkups at the GP? No, no, no. Why is that? I think from what I read um, and what I understand of the whole system, you can choose where you want to have your treatment for and even though I don't know whether or not this is something that's based on what I've read and what I perceive of everything at the moment the doctors purely registered us so they get some sort of funding because I'm a diabetic specialist diabetic patient under their care um, yet I'm not seen by them I'm seen by the hospital um, the only other things that I've really had are you know the retinopathy scan uh, where they check whether or not you're getting the glaucoma. Um, I had one of those letters from the, the NHS Trust um, and I went to one of these walk-in centres where they had a mobile unit. Um, but everything else has been through the hospital. The um, a hospital to have their own website, own microsite, which would have maybe had links to where the useful information sources are uh, and where you can gain support, useful telephone numbers you know, because it's easy to mislay a piece of paper, to lose a phone, maybe lose numbers um, basically have case studies on it, but you know, show how people of different ages are dealing with it so at different stages of your life how you could be coping with certain issues that you might be facing, uh, what predominantly happens uh, to people on the main then um, Again, you know, not not taking the ideas from others, but basically linking to the right sources. So somebody may have already produced a website on 
healthy eating recipes, uh, you know, how to, I don't know, minor exercise routines that aren't too, uh, you know, too much for somebody to detest, maybe. <laughs> um, you know, as well, maybe getting the viewpoint of someone younger. I mean, for instance, uh, just going back to what you were saying in terms of exercise, one thing that it's not much, but it is something, is there's a, the games console, the Nintendo Wii. You know, it's an interactive, you're up there, shaking around, burning calories more so than you would be if you were just sitting down, tapping away on a gamepad. So, you know, there's uh, little things which build up into a bigger thing. You know, so you could be that kind of person, or you could be someone who's, you know, you could have those kind of lifestyle options, they could have a lifestyle option where you've got people who go to the gym, go, you know, do the, the treadmills and what, what not. I've read about it, but I think it's it'd be too harsh for me to say. I don't know if it would be too harsh for me to say. You choose your own attitude in life. You know, if you let things get to you, then things will get to you. If you choose to look at uh, more for the positives, even if when there are negatives that are blatantly, you know, taking you down, then you have something like you say a goal to aim for, mm -hmm. something more positive to look out for. Um, it it can you know if somebody I can understand why somebody would think it's it it's depressing because if it is if they're not managing it correctly or they're not being given the support correctly uh, the sort of support network's not in place or they're not aware of their options they're not aware that you know they can still leave a uh, lead a normal life then I suppose yeah people could get depressed about it but it's Again, it's it's your own choice of how you feel. You know, you you could choose in the morning to get up and have a good day. You could choose to get up in the morning and have a, a miserable day. Um, I think one thing I've been taught over the years as well, especially being from a sales background, is that um, you don't let those around you affect you. Or if there is what you call a, a mood hoover, you know, somebody who sucks the mood out of the rest of the people, you try to change their attitude so that they become more positive. So it's, um, the focus is to stay, just stay positive all the time. <laughs> I'm not, <laughs> okay. Um, exercise has not been a big part of my life. I'll be the first to admit it's not. Uh, laziness is one, um, commitment issues. I did try when I was younger, um, I'd say, hold, uh, 16. Not 29, but 16. I went and joined uh, one of the health clubs, pay, even paid a subscription to it. That's how committed I was to trying to do it. Um, went from a friend from work. Now, beforehand, she took me to uh, Thornton's and we had chocolate. And I thought, you know what? Oh, toffee, sorry. And I thought, you know what? Okay, fair enough. We're going to burn this off when we get there. So we had a really good session. We did the track, you know, went swimming. They even did the fat blubby test where they pinch you. You know, I'm obviously embarrassed because I've got a bit on me. And she's there going, oh, look at me. You know, I've got... Um, but afterwards, she takes me some blooming pizza up, didn't she? <laughs> yeah. So I thought to myself, you know what? I said to her, look, if this is what's going to happen every time, I can't do it. There's no point. I'm going to put more on than I'm losing. Um, I did try, obviously, some sports in my uh, life... Um, Used to be part of an amateur badminton club um, in nearby. Um, I stopped when I married and moved away from there. Um, used to play cricket in my college days, I suppose. Um, used to play that with my, you know my best friend and other people from the college. Um, and that's real. I'm very conscious about me, me uh, about me at pools, thinking that if I jump in the water, I'll jump out, kind of thing. So it's. You know, the only like the last time um, I went swimming was when I went to Florida in two thousand and three, and I made sure I'd worn uh, one of those. You know, the no sleeves, but like uh, those kind of things. I made sure I had that on when I went swimming because I was just I don't want people to laugh at me or something. Um, before that, it was when I was a child, a very young child. There was a private swimming school, and I just got me uh, my width and my level certificates from there, and then that was it. So, no, exercise is not... Uh, I keep being asked by uh, family members, do I want to go and 
uh, to the gym with them and things. And it's A through laziness, B through family, you know, sometimes it's my turn to look after baby. Um, finding, you know, the commitment and the time. Because by the time you have time off, so I, at the moment, my day's off on Wednesdays, I'm, I think the word shattered. <laughs> I am, I am, I am actually just want to lay back you know have a snooze maybe catch up on some of the programs I've missed okay so you had your treatment in hospital now who you say you went on to insulin straight away they weren't sure at first um they weren't sure whether or not it was a type 1 or type 2. And to be fair, from everything that I read in, say, the Diabetes UK stuff and um, research that's been passed to me by family members, etc., and stuff I've done on my own, um, there's no sort of in-between stage, like a, a 1.5 or something. You know, it's either a 1 or a 2. And if they're never sure, they'll always stick you as a 2, just to be safe, uh, rather than go on the cautious side. 